Hey y'all, I'm here today to share a pure data machine learning failure. However, this is an interesting failure, at least that's what I think. So I thought it was worth talking through it and sharing the unique aesthetic results of this patch. So here was my concept. As I've talked about before, neurons are basically just mixers, right? They take in different signals at different weights and then output the result. In order for this neuron to learn, it needs to collect information about its output, how far off its output was from the desired goal, and then it needs to be able to adjust its weights accordingly to try to better achieve that goal. Make sense? Okay, what if I have an audio signal that I'm trying to match, amplitudes that are happening over time, and I give the neuron three inputs, and I tell it to weight those inputs to best recreate that audio signal. So again, the neuron is taking in multiple audio inputs, weighing them, and then trying to recreate a given audio signal just by looking at its amplitude at a given time. Now, doing this in real time was where my failure came to pass, but I do end up with the sound of the neuron, or in this case of the patch we're looking at here, the neural network, constantly correcting itself in order to try to reproduce that signal. Let me strip this down to something simpler so I can show you something that actually works, and then I'll work back up to how this patch is working. All right, so here we go, let's talk through this. Usually I like to build these patches from scratch, so you can recreate them yourself. But since this is a failure, eh, I'll, I'll hold off on that for today. Okay, so here's our desired result. I have an oscillator at 61 hertz. The reason that's so low, I'll get into in a second. I think that's part of my failure here. Then I multiply it by 0 0.8. So reducing the amplitude, I can adjust that too. Maybe we can, I don't know, let's make it quieter. Let's make it 0 0.5. And then this... OSC update, this is just a metronome going at 100 milliseconds that's updating these oscilloscopes here. So that gets into this goal one, and you can see that's our goal there, because tab right goal, that's our goal. It also sends this off to the goal here. We'll talk about that in a second. Here's the input of our neuron. I'm going to go down this line first, and I'll talk about this stuff on the uh, right in just a moment. Receive in one. Okay. I have multiple inputs here. For now, I'm just listening to N1, all right? So N1 comes in. Again, I'm gonna cut back to all these friends later. Goes, gets multiplied by this weight, and then gets thrown to the mixer. So again, just attenuated, right? Or attenuated or attenuverted, right? Because this can go, this is zero in the middle, one, negative one gets caught by our mixer. As I've explained before, the artificial neuron is just a mixer with a non-linearity, the activation function. I love tan H as an audio person, so I always throw the tan H in there. And then, talk about this in a second, that gets to the neuron out, and that arrives here. Now, we got to get to the learning part. That's all a review, right? I've done that before in my patch from scratch. I'll link the videos if you want to check that out. Now that we have this neuron out, let's figure out how far away it is from the goal. So if we subtract what we have from what we want, we should get the error, right? So that's what's going on here. Uh, it's wiggling a little bit because I'm probably not at exactly zero here, but I take the neuron's output, subtract what the goal is, I know where it needs to go to get closer to that, right? That's being written to this table here. Now. I'm taking a snapshot of that sampled error, so I'm just, this is part of this calculate thing. When I start training, I just have it calculate and then update, right? I have it as a two-step process. So anyway, okay, what happens to that sampled error? Well, the sampled error comes up here. Okay, so it receives the calculate, which is telling it, okay, take the input, multiply it by the sampled error, and multiply it by the derivative of the output. This is not my idea. This is how, uh, according to the internet, a neural network learns. So this is the adjustment. So you take the weights, you take the error, how far it is away from what you wanted. You take the input, which is what it's getting. And then you multiply it by the derivative of the output. And that's here, right? So this is the derivative of tan h. Once again, it's being sampled there. Okay, so we need to adjust those weights. So again, we take in the input, that's there, multiply it by the error, that's here, multiply it by the derivative of the output, that's there, 
and then I am going to adjust the weight by that. So I'm clipping it from negative one to one just so it doesn't overshoot. I found this helps things. Again, still a failure, but it helps things. And then that adjustment comes into this float. This float is storing the weight. So I can hit randomize here. I'm going to hit this and we're going to start hearing things. This randomize randomizes, as you can see, it chooses a number between negative one and one, random 200 times 0.1 minus one, and it stores that in the flow, right? Once I've started training it, it's going to automatically update. So let's see that. And there it's gone. Hey, it's doing a pretty good job. Let me turn the training off, randomize it again. It said negative, train it again. So again, the training is trying to match this. By the way, this input one is an oscillator at 61. And so it's trying to get to that 0.5. Eh, it's not really there. It seems to hover around uh, 0.52 instead of 0.5. The reason this is happening, I believe, and this is my failure, is that I'm trying to do things at audio rate, whereas by the time it's done the calculation, it's probably always a little bit behind, right? And so what I found is changing the rate of this training right now, I have a metro going at 0.1 milliseconds. Changing this rate drastically changes the result. <laughs> Of here. So lower is generally better, but if I go too low, it starts to do strange things too. So again, I think my mistake is trying to do this at audio rate when the whole system isn't really doing that. But uh, to compound on this error, let's have some fun. Command D. So now I'm going to receive input two, which is uh, an oscillator at 45 there, and then let's command D, input three, which is at 88, okay? Let's unclick train for a second, let's randomize them. All right, and let's start training. It's actually doing pretty good to get them. So again, these two are, are at zero, and this one's at 0.5. I mean, we could try to switch this to 45. Okay, it's getting negative 0.5 there. It's possible. I'm not being very careful about phases. It's possible that that's closer. Let's do the third one is at 88. That's a faster frequency, so more likely to cause us problems. It's not really getting that, is it? Again, we can try to see if if we were to delete those. It's not doing a very good job trying to get to that. What if we try to train it to do silence? Right, so I've just disconnected that, so there's nothing going, oh, it's doing pretty good, it's silence. Let's see what happens if this one tries to recreate 61, which an oscillator at 88 shouldn't be able to do. 61. Eh, it's doing okay. All right, so let's choose a number that's not in there. Let's see if we can get it to recreate 70. All right, well, okay, it's, it's trying. Uh, so it's maintaining a constant level of error, but it's not doing a very good job recreating that. Once again, this is smoothing. I can make that a bit faster. I can make it significantly faster here. So now it's smoothing those new values over just 10 milliseconds instead of 100. So you can really see that neuron struggling to catch up. Stop training. Randomize, randomize. Train it. Again, change the rate of this. Change this so it's every 10 milliseconds, right? Well, let's go back to 61, which we, in theory, it should be able to reproduce. Yeah, it's not doing so great. Again, this is a failure, uh, but perhaps an interesting failure. 
so what I did was I took it a step further, a failing step further, and made a neural network. Okay, so here's that. Get my metronome going. There's my goal and my error. It looks like here I flipped the goal, my subtraction, but I think in my neurons, yeah, I also flipped the weight adjustment here. If you're noticing that, uh, if you're not noticing that, then, then don't worry about it. Okay, so here's the neuron, right? The neuron's all inside now. It's wired up. Each neuron has its own activation function, right? But we're taking now the final output of the network and seeing what it does. So I can randomize that. So here are my inputs here. Right now, I've got an oscillator at 75, which is actually on input one. I've just randomized it. I haven't started training it. So now let's see what happens when it tries to recreate that. All right, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's put in some numbers here. 100 hertz. Okay, let's try to do silence. I'm going to hit zero on the amplitude. No, oh, it thinks it's going to get there. Think simple brain. Hey, it did it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Neuron brain can do it, but can it do? And also, there at sixty-two. At point five. Well, no, not really. But man, this error sounds great. It's the sound of a 16 neuron brain striving to recreate something. An incompetently designed 16 neuron brain at that. Anyway, I worked on this for quite some time on and off, and I couldn't get it to work any better than that. Someone out there far smarter than me at Pure Data, if you can get this working at the audio rate, I would love to hear it. Could probably go back and, and work out one that it doesn't do the training in real time as things are going, but maybe I'll do that some other time. Again, the higher the frequency, the updating is so slow, there's no way that the neuron will ever get there. All right, I'm going to leave it there. I hope my failures bring you joy. I'll catch you next time.